Hello, friends. Welcome to Porch Thoughts. That's me, just random thoughts over here. Well, not, well maybe not so random. <laughs> They're usually about art or music, some, some creative process, or my w- random wild thoughts about philosophy or uh, meditation, some other things. Along with my music in the background and stuff. Talking about, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Today I'm going to record this and not be live. I'm not live right now. I'm not recording this and I'm like live at the same time. (laughs) I figure that way I'd get my ideas out and thoughts a little better. Let's see, today is the 19th of December. I have tea. I just gave up drinking coffee. Let's see how long that lasts. Basically, I ran out, so (laughs) I don't have any coffee. Uh, I think that's going to make it easier to quit if we don't have any. So today I wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, Painting, mostly. Uh, You know, uh, painting portraits of things. And just painting things in general and how... They uh, possess you or attract certain energies to you. And I once believed that I could conjure things by painting them, and like summon them into existence. And uh, it was like a manifestation. But then I, I realized recently that painting things uh, can possess you. Like the things you paint will possess you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the other way around. You're not possessing the thing you're painting. It's possessing you. You know, I'll try to explain that. And the other thing is just, you know, like uh, commissions and stuff. You should really get money on a commission. Learn from my mistakes. You know, I've known this in the past and I've, I've been aware of it. But lately it's just been hard. And I figure, you know... I trust people and stuff, and so I just, I thought, I figured, you know, people would be trustworthy, but it's hard times right now, and people go back on their word, or or they change their mind, you know, shit happens. But, so, if you do start a commission for someone, get half the money you want for it first. That way you at least can pay for your time, or some of your time, some of your supplies, and if they change their mind, you still have money. You know, so... I've lear- learned from my mistakes <laughs> and I've learned that before and for some reason I had to go through it again I don't know it's it's tricky this year people are not buying art like they used to at least not for me I don't know um, so one of the things that I found out from painting portraits especially because recently this year I painted a lot of portraits, and they, they, you know, they were good. They, I learned a lot, you know, this year, 2022. I got a little better at painting portraits, but I feel like I learned something different, and it kind of needs a little backstory here. Uh, when I first started painting portraits, I started painting like lions and stuff like that, with faces of animals, and. It, I didn't notice it so much, but it was attracting a certain kind of animal behavior and uh, different things. Like I was painting lions and attracting Leos into my life. It was a trip. Uh, But one of the things I noticed, I'm trying to pick a color here to do as a base for this painting I'm going to paint over. Um, One of the things that I noticed is when, you know, and this is just me. This is not for everybody in everybody's case it might be for some artists maybe you're in similar position that I am where uh, you're taking commissions uh, you like to maybe get a little high while you're smoking you know just drinking coffee and and you're like okay I'm gonna get this done you know that kind of thing and you go through your process where you draw it on there you know you get it you get it all laid out and you then you pick your colors and you you just go at it and like for me, I'm always going for like, you know, some kind of accuracy, but then it turns into some, my style where it's kind of fuzzy and vague and 
but like he's still detailed and you know there's a certain thing that i see and uh and i think people are like are like oh that's your style but then what i've learned and i think this is this is just me like going off my own judgment of why people change their mind and stuff is that um you have to ask them like do you want an exact replication of the photo they give me oh that's a whole other thing man get a good photo <laughs> get a good photo where their face is big there's lots of detail good lighting like and have them think about it but maybe be like ask them a bunch of sub questions and be like you know what do you want to look at what do you want to represent you for the rest of you know having this painting on your wall what do you want to look at and some people choose really weird paint photos like it's a good memory or something but it's not good detail and so you have to tell them okay well this is not good detail so i'm gonna do it stylistically you know you do it like colorful and not and just kind of make stuff up you know but you have to explain that to them you know or or if you do that or if you do like have a good picture of them and you want to you know like just then you ask them do you want an exact replication of this or do you want it in my style and i think that's an important question because people some people just want it done exactly like it you know or or kind of in your style but then i'm like do you want it like super trippy and psychedelic with all these crazy colors and make you look all like heavenly or you know got theoretical realms going on and then they're like yeah you know so you gotta ask i think some people don't they're like because i found out this way i painted a portrait for someone and they and they liked it and they were kind of going back and forth and then i added some stuff to the background they're like "Ooh, you're turning it into you're like what are you you're v-ing it up or what i forgot what they said they're like you're making it like your style and i'm like yeah and they're like that's what i like and i'm like oh i get it now you know like that's why they asked me to paint a portrait like i was trying to make it exact you know a, like representation of whatever the photo is but yeah get a good photo get a good you know <laughs> Get a good image to work from, agree on it, and then agree in the style that they want it. And if they want anything added to it, like a specific background of a place they like or something, you know, could be like they want them in the forest or they want them in the, in, you know, the beach or so. You never know. So get money, get an exact what you want, Whoa, what they want. And uh, don't drop your paintings on other paintings. I need a darker, I need like black or something. Oh, look at this. I wonder if there's any purple left in this. Oh, but you're, oh, oh, there is. Oh, don't get it all over yourself. <laughs> all right, uh, so, yeah. And then, okay, so the next part about portraits is this. I tend to open myself up energetically. I'm kind of, I don't know what you, I don't want to say empath. Empath, <laughs> okay. I try not to be in pain, but I'm open to energy, you know, so like I end up picking up on energy a lot and I pick up on other people's thoughts. I pick up on just uh, other people's depression, other people's pain. Uh, it, it's weird. It's a weird thing. I, I just pick up on if you're like me, if you're like this, then beware of painting portraits because holy shit, I didn't even know what was happening to me. I didn't realize what was happening to me until like a year into it. I'm like, why am I going through all these weird mood swings? Like, why am I, like, it just, I, I felt, didn't feel like myself. I kept having thoughts, other people's thoughts. And I'm like, this is weird. Maybe it's just the whole, what's going on in the world right now or some shit. I kept thinking that to myself. Maybe it's just what's going on in the world. And then I painted somebody who just committed suicide as like a tribute. And it hit me. I realized what it was actually it hit me right before that painting because i i suspected it but wasn't sure the person who asked me to paint the portrait was for somebody else who was kind of down and depressed and they needed something to cheer them up and it was like a weird intent right and so <laughs> i painted this picture and then i come to find out that girl was like real depressed and i'm like and then i got real depressed Whew, man it, it and then i start thinking back to all the portraits i've done of all the people i've painted and like what I was going through at the time. And I'm like, holy. Like when I first started painting portraits, I was painting so many people. I painted so many people. I painted like all my friends on Facebook. I was like, everybody put a picture and I'll paint you. And I did that. And it, 
If anybody's known me in this last few years while I've been painting portraits, I've been a little schizophrenic, just to say the least. And, you know, like I, I think back about when I painted, uh, what's his face? Uh, Robin Williams, and I'm like, whoa, that's right. That was some, whoa, that's when I really got into the puppets and stuff. Like, there's just certain things. Like, I got really into certain, like, certain topics. Like, when I painted Albert Einstein, and then it just, like, a certain dreams would happen around the same time. <laughs> it's just really weird. So then I, I painted this girl who was depressed, but then the girl after that, I painted had just committed suicide. And I think it was the first person I've ever painted who just killed themselves, but then, like, a recent amount of time and then I don't really want to go into detail about the selling of it and like that because that was a whole fiasco if you know anything about what happened at the time you know but um it really left me with this super deep depression I felt suicidal I really did and it, man I was like where is this coming from because it didn't feel like it was coming from me and I think it's just more proof of that these days like everything is just super thin like and we're sensitive so you gotta like really be careful who you paint and what you do you know like when you paint these people like and they they don't they don't understand how you're painting and what it means to them like and it really lends an ear to to some other artists that I look up to that I've heard in the past say this and they say, you know, like Amanda Sage said this, a couple other people said this about you got to really have intent about the things you paint, you know, because it, it gets to the point. She probably doesn't even remember saying this, but we're, uh, you know, you've got to be very selective about what you choose to paint, you know, because it's painting you. And I think that what that's what a lot of people leave out is that it's not that you're possessing it. It's possessing you. Like, you got to be careful what you call into existence because it becomes part of you, you know? And so, like, it's really made me think about, like, some of the stuff I painted and going back and looking at some of the stuff I painted. And I'm just like, whoa. This, I mean, each painting is, like, a representation of something that is, like, happening to me at the time. And, um, like, literally. <laughs> so, like, if you've known me and you've seen what I've been painting, then you can kind of, It's just a clear view right into my psyche, man. It's just stupid. It's stupid. It's like any artist. Go look at any artist and, let, and somebody who's producing a lot of art and then step back, look at it all kind of like as an exhibit. Just scroll through their Instagram and just kind of look at all of it in general, the color tones they pick, the patterns that they choose. Like, what they're representing, it's like their own personal tarot deck. I've said that before. Like, it's like their own thing, you know? So it's it's a trip to just kind of step back and look at a whole artist's life, like a biography of somebody. So anyways, you know, just be careful of what you paint and then, you know, the intention you have when you put into painting it. Like like the music you listen to, the the feelings you have, the good vibrations you're in while you're painting it. That has a lot to do with it. It has everything to do with it, especially if you're doing any kind of substance that opens you up, you know. Like, I'm definitely more careful about lighting incense and, like, burning sage ahead of time and, like, saying a little prayer and then, like, writing intention down on the canvas before I paint over it. Kind of like, like, you know, goodness. I I'll just put, like, general basic stuff, like, happy goodness smile and just, you know like if the person's smiling right smile you know just certain things you gotta just put a little intent in there <laughs> you know and then it it helps when you go to sell it <laughs> i'm looking for uh my sage let's see i just had a big chunk of sage here here we go there it is it's got dragon's blood on it it's got sage dipped in dragon's blood and um I, I I burned that the other day and my roommate was like, ooh, dragon's blood. And I was like, what, you don't like that? She's like, eh, it's just kind of a, a weird energy. And I get it, but like, I didn't really get it. So I looked it up, dragon's blood on sage. And what it means, it just, it's whenever you use dragon's blood in something, and dragon's blood actually comes from a specific plant. It's not like a made up blend. I always thought it was like a blend of smells. It comes from a specific plant. But anyways, uh, when you combine it with sage, it just enhances it. It's like makes it more potent. And she's just, I think she just doesn't like the smell and the color or whatever. Which is fine. That's cool. I'll just burn it in here. But I'm going to burn it. 
around this painting I'm about to paint over. Because this person didn't want this painting, so I'm just gonna have to paint over it. But I'm gonna turn it into a happy painting, of, uh, which is will be a gift. So I'm just gonna gift. I don't. I'm not gonna try to sell the painting that I put on here. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it into a happy place, you know. And then you know that way. You know, it's not their fault they don't want this painting. It just, shit happens. It changes, you know. And I put energy and effort into it, but I learned something from it. I learned a little lesson about how to be a little more intentful with, you know. Like, a little more communicative with the person, too. Like, I don't want to go into the detail about why or what happened. I just don't want to do that again. <laughs> So I'm just gonna I'm gonna paint a portrait I'm gonna paint a portrait But I'm gonna stick to animals Cause they're pretty cheerful <laughs> You know Dogs are pretty cheerful Cats are pretty chill I like their energy a lot But I think I might just stick to animals for now And then specific people That I wanna call I wanna let possess me <laughs> You know, like, or at least, at least, like, maybe, maybe not let possess me, but be a little more, bit more aware of, of like how, like, the intent basically, of how it plays out. So, you know, like, every painting is a spell. I, I feel like every painting is like you're making a wish or some kind of thing. You're putting a and some kind of thing into it. And if you leave it intentless, then it ends up, you know, like maybe possessing you more. Maybe that's it. So, like, next time I paint a portrait, maybe, you know, like have a little bit more reasoning why. Like, I knew this girl, the, this girl that I, the first girl I met that painted portraits was, uh, she's changed her name since then, but her name used to be Purple Hardest. And she was a really cool artist. I met in Oregon that uh, she painted portraits and she would give them as gifts and people really and she would like bring people to tears you know because it just was so good and shit she's like I like that I was like what do you like bringing people to tears and she's like yeah she's like it just makes them feel really good and it's like a good thing to give someone and I'm like I just didn't get it you know but that was her intent you know that was her I didn't get it at the time but that was her intent was to to bring that about as like as a gift you know and and i'm over here trying to make money you know i'm like give me money because i've had a new family so you know i should have noticed that a long time ago but so when you do it for money you got to be a little more intentful i feel like you got to have that like like i wish them prosperity i wish them health and balance. I wish that you know what I mean, like that kind of thing. I wish them happiness and oh shit! <laughs> oh my god, I just scored a paint onto my screen. Oh crap! <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotta wipe that off. Or something. <laughs> yeah. So you get. I can. I'm just gonna. Um, you know, wish them the best and. You know, kind of do a reverse thing on this painting. It's like, I wish them the best. And, and I, I, you know, I hope that they all find purple peace. I'm just painting them in purple. A purple piece for the holidays. Purpley, purple, purpleness. Purple's a good vibe. It's comfort, comforting. But yeah, so when you when you go to paint something... And I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to turn, I'm going to like transform this painting. So it went from trying to make money to like trying to paint this. This is one of those paintings. I painted this super accurately. I wasn't trying to add any color, make it look like vibrant, which is probably what you wanted. And I didn't communicate that. So, um, you know, just, I'm trying to put the intent. I'm going to write on there, happy dogs. Cause I'm going to paint some happy dogs. 
long life, long life. Right. I'll, I'll write that. Healthy long life. Probably should have gessoed it, but I don't want to. I don't have enough gesso. Plus, I'm gonna do like a. I'm gonna do like an underpainting, so I'm just basically just filling it in. But I want it to be as thin as possible, so I'm gonna kind of thin it out here. I want purple. I was gonna gesso it too, and then I thought there's a lot of black on there already, so I'm just gonna try to use that to my advantage and save on the gesso. But if it was anything, uh, if I was doing anything else, I'd probably gesso over it because then you, so you can see how you can still kind of see it a little bit. Gesso was great. Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, "So is gesso just to fill in?" And I was like, "Yes." took me so long to realize that like when you get a canvas it comes pre-gessoed usually like if you don't make it yourself so uh putting gesso on it kind of fills in all that that knit or whatever that i like to call it the uh you know the fabric of the canvas so you can it's like smoother you know you don't have to use as much paint it's smoother and then, you know, you can get straight to working on it, and you know, it doesn't take a lot of paint, you know. And you can almost have like a water effect, a water color effect going on too when you use a good amount of gesso and flatten it out. But this should be good. This should work fine. So I'm just gonna uh, let this dry, smooth it out a little bit. I'll probably. Um, I'll probably hit it with a little sandpaper. There's a couple little rough spots. Um, if you have any like paint raised up a little bit, like brush strokes or something, you can just hit it with some sandpaper and then just go over it with some paint. But when you put a solid color, you can, it helps to see all those little bumps a little better. So there's like a little bit here and here. So I'll let that dry. All right. So so yeah. So let's see. Being possessed by your paintings. Are you possessed by your paintings? If you're an artist, just think back about the stuff that you painted and it, like maybe how it correlates, the energy of that art, how it correlates to your life at the time. And it, I think I think there's a lot of like coincidental, coincidental things. Uh, I just painted Jesus, and I don't even want to start with that. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. I've been having dreams. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, um, and just I feel like I I can comprehend some of the information more. It's weird. I don't know, but it kind of makes me think. Well, who am I gonna paint next? Who could I paint next? You know, and I've painted my brother. I've painted, and then man, I feel like I had such a bond with him after that. Like it felt like we connected on some level after that, and then you know just. Just maybe be aware of that. It might not happen to you in the same way, but if you, oh, I know what I mean. But if you are, a, a, if you're an artist thinking about doing portraits, you know. And, I'll, you know, the same thing goes with different subject matter of picking things to paint. Like, uh, you know, you're conjuring that energy and then it, it becomes part of you, you know. That's, if you, especially if you sign your name onto it, that's like a little magical spell right there. When you sign your name onto it. I think I know a lot of artists who don't sign their names on it, I think for that reason, but I don't know. It's different for everybody. And I think people find that along the way. Uh, a lot of artists are into occult things, you know, so we, we open ourselves up to certain information and we we're into knowing things. Oh, that brings me to my next little thing I've been thinking about the knowing. So like in, and I guess in meditation practice, I've found there's like this, uh, this, I don't even know what they call it. I don't even want to call it anything because it's probably already has some dogma attached to it, but it's like these three stages that we go through and there's probably fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. And there was probably previous ones. I just, these are like in the middle somewhere. So <laughs> there's a stage where you, and I think it's part of being an artist 
is that um, in this stage of my life, I've become aware of this, that you go from knowing to gnosis, you know, knowing some, some like information, like knowing something, either information or wisdom or something, and it leads you down different paths. So you go from knowing to doing, which is like, you know, the researcher, the studier turning into the magician, you know, like, and then doing the acting or artist or whatever, like per performer, like you're the doer, you know, you're like making things happen in the world. And then from the doer, you go into the beer. And so that transition from doing to being is like a whole thing. So you got to learn how to basically let go of what you think you are, the artist, and then just be. So you're like, move past creation and illusion of creation and then into the state of just pure being, which is like almost unfathomable. You know, you have to, you have to imagine it up and then let go of that and then just release into some kind of awareness of, it's almost like you have to transform your awareness, but that state of being is like, it's like, uh, you know, key to true inspiration or, or maybe not true inspiration but like some pure state of inspiration that's un unfiltered you know it's got like a pure state to it maybe non-duality it's just kind of like this this pure state of mind where you're like aware of everything at once you're omnipresent in every moment <laughs> It's an interesting thought, but the that state of being, I think, is what we're all being pushed towards, moving towards in in our realities. Some of us are closer to it than others. Some of us are back before knowing, you know what I mean? Like, so I think a lot of people are getting into the knowing. They're like, oh, it's this information to know themselves, to know, not to get it from someone else. I think maybe the one before that was to like, you know, uh, devotion or something it was like i will devote myself and be a follower and then get information that way. i don't know i don't know i don't even know i don't know but i think that everyone's breaking out of i do know i don't know you know into uh the doer so we're all becoming doers but then some of us are becoming beers so it's just an interesting little concept to play around with in my mind because i also think about being an artist and then letting go of being an artist and what that means. Like uh, recently, <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. Recently with the whole AI art and stuff, let me clean this. Quick. Uh, the paint on my screen and I don't want it to dry. So recently with this AI art stuff, I noticed something. Uh, like, I made a kind of a, not a, you know, I made a little, I made a little complaint online. You know, that's what online's for. That's what Facebook's for, right? <laughs> I made some complaints. You know, I said some things about AI. I used it, though. I used it. I thought it was the coolest tool. Kind of like burnt out on it a little bit. You know, I used it for a couple weeks, about a month. You know, I never paid for it. <laughs> I just used like the free ones until the credits ran out or whatever and then uh you know i played around with the with the writing ones and all the different you know there's this one that's really funny that you you type in any question and it gives you a funny answer i thought that was good i typed in how are you and it, it answered not dead <laughs> i thought that was the best fucking ai joke i ever heard <laughs> but you know i'm not I'm not against AI. I just think the internet is going to be claimed by them and they're going to kick off all the artists and musicians. They're just going to kick us all off, basically. The internet's going to be a place where you go to, like, be entertained by AI. <laughs> I mean, it's already happening with algorithms. They have their hold on us, you know, because you look at algorithms and uh, it's kind of like the setup. It's like, is it algorithm or is it God? You know, because you can... Not the same thing, right? <clears throat> God prompts us, but the by by putting an algorithm on websites, it you know it creates this scenario where you are tailoring your content to reach people. 
you know, because the way that the algorithm works is that people get more of what they like. You know what I mean? So if they like bad, if they like like something that's negative, they're gonna get more negative. And if they like something, you know, something specific like art, then they're gonna get more art. Which, you know, it kind of works, but it's hard to bust out of that. You know, like so, there's a ton of stuff out there I'm not seeing because I'm not into it. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean it's bad. But in an, in one case that I can think about about is like an artist, somebody who's an artist who wants to reach people who aren't artists who might want to buy art. <laughs> That's the trickiest part that I think about any social media, being an artist and trying to reach people outside. You have to use that target audience mentality, you know? So because of the algorithm, somebody who posts art, the only people who are going to see that are other artists because they're all using the same hashtag. So it's like it gives you more of what you put out. So, so uh, or what you like. You know, so it's just going to keep you in that loop. And so you might by by bumping into different topics and using different topics and maybe going into current event kind of thing, you know, or using specific hashtags that are kind of a bigger scope of people then you can reach people. But for the most part, you got to you got to like think about that, you know, as an artist, because you're not just trying to reach artists. You're trying to reach people who want to buy art. So you got to put yourself in their categories that they're always in looking at stuff. But that's hard to know because if if you're an artist, you don't know what other people are saying unless you're interested in a bunch of things. And that's the trick of being an artist. You have to like, you don't have to, but if you want to be a selling artist, it's a good idea to pick a topic, pick a, a genre, pick a, pick something you can attach your art to, you know, like I really like children's books i really like like kid stories and the cartoons i'm i love cartoons so like that's kind of my genre for some of my art not all of my art and uh i like that you know that's it's fun when i'm depressed and i paint something cute and you know makes me in a better mood <laughs> it's just the way I, what i found out so oh did i get paint in there oh let's taste it I think it's just the color from the light or something. Uh, so yeah, there, you know, those. Not everyone will experience it like that. I think, but all right, I got it off me. So yeah, the doer, the beer. Are you a beer? But what's the point of being a beer? Well, to move past this into a new reality or at least a new knowing maybe it loops back around maybe you go from knowing to doing to being back to knowing again so after being you become aware of new stuff there's like a new knowing you have to go through that to be to get something maybe i don't know it's my experience uh i kind of lost my train of thought because i was cleaning all this stuff up there was something i was going to say let's see Let's review what we've done here today. Right when it says 3.33. Or 33 minutes and 33 seconds. I'm like, hmm, let's get back on track, shall we? Nah. That was good. That was a good ramble. A good thought. So, you know, if you're painting a portrait, just kind of be aware of those things, you know? And if you act professional, then people will treat you professional. It's the way it works, I guess. But... I always tell another little thing is that if you're trying to sell art, you know, be show up, you know, like be be quick about it. Like in the first message, say how big it is, how much you want for it, and how long it's gonna take to get there. And I'm I'm not so good at that. Don't don't hold me to that. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just telling people. If that's what you do, you'll be super successful. And all your artists, all your your uh, People who buy art from you will buy art a second time. It's very likely. So treat them like gold. And to all the people who supported me through the years, I really appreciate it. You know, it got me through to now. I got to progress. I got to learn stuff. You know, I got to advance in my art and take the time to produce stuff. Right now, I'm, I'm, everything's going to change. You know, you might not see so much content from me for a while, so... If you're uh, curious what's going on, come on over to the streams. I got about a month left. (laughs) 
What's today? The 19th? Yeah. About a month left of streaming. So come on by and say hi. I'll be there streaming most days. And you come see what I paint on top of this. I'm going to paint my roommate's dogs for Christmas. <laughs> so maybe you'll see the time lapse somewhere. Have a good holiday. Have a good Christmas. If you're not doing anything on Christmas, come by on my streams. I'll be live all day. I'm going to make a little, I'm going to make some treats too. I, I got some stuff to make treats. I haven't made these treats in years. Oh, it's so oh, delicious. You take the butterscotch chips, you know those butterscotch chips? They only sell them this time of year. And the chocolate chips, and you mix them together, heat them up, melt them up real good. And then you put um, those Chinese crispy noodles that you can get in a bag. You dump those in there, mix them up, and then you get a can of mixed nuts. And dump those in there. And you... And then you scoop them out on uh, parchment paper, little haystacks, you know, chocolate haystacks. And then you, you put them in the refrigerator and let them cool off. Yum. And then you pop them off, put them in a Tupperware or something. Oh, this is your best. Give them away as a gift. Mm. I'm going to make a video, though. Uh, so, But that's pretty easy. You just get those ingredients, put throw them together, and then little Christmas treats. They're so good. I mean, if they're not so good, if you have bad teeth, I guess. <laughs> just put, the, just take the big nuts out. <laughs> just take out the big nuts. All right, kids. All right, folks. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you spend it with some family. Give them hugs. Love them. Smile at them. Look into their eyes and tell them how much you love them. And what they mean to you. Because you never know. What's going to happen next? Peace. Pieces of peace and love and shit. Be good. It's always better, right? Be good. This moment creates the next. Till next time. <laughs>